All right, a few more people still coming on board, but um, let's kick off today. Get started with our webinar, an introduction to KYC and AML using Creditor Watch. We've got a really big one for you today. Um, KYC, AML becoming a lot more relevant. Um, and as you'll see, a lot more people using it outside of specific industries that have used it for some time. Uh, my name's Patrick Coglin, I'm the CEO. Um, as always, a few housekeeping things to start off with. Q&A, we do have a question box in the GoToWebinar control panel, so please ask questions if you have any, and I will either get to them during the webinar, or at the end of the webinar rather. Um, I do answer a couple of common ones, um, and it is quite a complex and complicated subject, so if it is a little bit more um, of a an, a question that requires a longer answer either by phone call or email, we'll get back to you on that as well. We're recording the webinar, so if you have to leave us or you want to pass it on to someone, um, we'll send that through in the next 24 hours. And the session, as always, will be about 30 minutes, potentially a touch over, um, as there's plenty to get through today. So today's agenda, we'll touch on exactly who Credit Watch is. We're obviously growing all the time, releasing new products. We're going to look at acronyms. If there's one thing that KYC, AML, CTF really enjoys, it is acronyms, as you can tell. Um, a bit of an introduction to uh, KYC itself. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of the products that Creditor Watch has that can assist you with, um, with this subject matter. Um, there's plenty of them. Um, I won't go through all of them, but I will touch on all of them at some point as well. Um, and of course, poll questions will appear throughout the session. I love asking people questions, getting answers, seeing what the results are. So who are we? We're Australia's leading commercial credit reporting bureau with over 50,000 customers across Australia, from small businesses all the way to um, the largest organisations in Australia using Creditor Watch. Um, a wide variety of products, reports, features, data that you can access with us, core being obviously credit reports of varying sizes, um, monitoring and alerts, debt collection tools. Um, and of course, today we will touch on, you know, KYC AML related products that you can access within Creditor Watch, within your Creditor Watch account. So straight into it, quick poll question. Do you currently have um, a KYC process in place? Um, this will give me a really good understanding of how many people, um, I guess, are doing it necessarily doing the right thing or the wrong thing. Um, and of course, we put a maybe in there because there'll be plenty of people that probably think they are, but are um, unsure and hopefully we can clear that up um, for you today. I'm expecting a fairly even balance. That's what I'm, um, I'm gambling on. Fairly even balance of uh, yes, no's and maybes. So thank you to those who have voted. Give it another couple of seconds. All right, let's have a look at the results. So a really nice spread there. 30% yes, which is, to be honest, um, probably more than I really, really anticipated if I was to think about it completely rationally. Um, no's 32, maybe's 38, which is great to see. So thanks for the honesty there. Now, as I said, um, KYC loves, or the whole process, the whole industry is built around acronyms, all right? So I've just got a couple that I put here. What is KYC? No, your customer. AML, anti-money laundering, CTF, counter-terrorism, financing. So AML, CTF are usually put together. UBO, ultimate beneficial owner. So who ultimately owns a company? BOI is the verification of identity, um, and that is often done through the DVS, which is the government-run document verification service. And a PEP is a politically exposed person. So those will come up throughout the discussion today or throughout my presentation. Um, so feel free to um, try to keep those in mind as I go through them, and I'm, no doubt I'll repeat them when we're going through them when they come up. All right, so an introduction to KYC and AML for you. 
I've, I've pretty much pulled this specific um, explanation from what I've deemed the KYC Bible, which is Austrax Ready Reckoner. So there's a link in there for those of you who want to jump in and have a look at the, um, the yellow pages like document that you know governs Austrax, the Austrax gut users to govern um, the Anti Money Laundering and Counterterrorism Finance Act 2006. Um, under Part B specifically, it's really giving you a good understanding of what KYC and AML is. It's a requirement for businesses to identify and verify their customers and understand their financial activities. Failure to comply can result in fines and other serious consequences, including imprisonment. Um, know Your Customer or KYC is the process by which organisations do this verification of their clients assess the risk and assess the ongoing risk as well. I think that's really important. The one thing that I have found and, um, and my colleagues at Credit Watch has found is for those people who are doing the right thing from an onboarding of a new customer and identifying that customer, um, often there isn't a lot done by way of ongoing monitoring, which is really, really important. Um, it's as important as the upfront information. So very important that you get the monitoring and alerts into that and you're doing your sort of annual reviews. The goal of KYC is to prevent organisations from being, from being used intentionally or not for money laundering and other illegal activities. So this is something that's been adopted globally, particularly within the finance system um, uh, to combat money laundering and the, the financing of, um, of terrorism ultimately. Industries and consequences of breaches. So currently in Australia, there are three main industry or three industries that are legislated that have to follow a KYC AML um, process. Um, those are companies within the financial services. There's obviously a myriad of companies and types of companies that fall under that. Anyone in, involved in bullion um, and also, and probably no surprise, um, organisations that provide gambling services. So some notable consequences that we've had in recent times. Um, I would assume most people would have heard of CBA. It was all through the you know, mainstream media being fined $700 million. And that related to hundreds of incidents of um, CBA not performing their AML duties for amounts of $10,000 or more essentially being deposited um, into their intelligent um, ATMs, all right? So there were people that were depositing more than $10,000. That's generally the threshold. Uh, you would notice that when you, you're leaving or coming into Australia, you always have to tick that you're not coming in with the $10,000 or more cash equivalent. Um, there was, there was um, yeah, hundreds of instances, may even have been a thousand plus of, um, of those amounts being deposited into accounts ultimately by uh, um, intelligent ATM machines and there was no KYC or AML process taking place. Um, November 2017, Tab Corp was fined 45 million. They were at that time, that was the biggest fine out of, um, by Austrac. And NAB are currently working through um, a potential fine with Austrac as well. I believe they're trying to avoid ending up in court and they're trying to uh, essentially find a settlement that will satisfy both parties. So that will be a sizable one as well. So let's think about non-legislated industries, okay? So that would make up the majority of our, of our credit or watch customer base. So I don't want you sitting there, so I'll jump back in there and go, well, I'm not in financial services, bullion or gambling services, so why would I use this? Why is this relevant to me? Why is it relevant? Um, what we're actually seeing is more and more legislated, non-legislated entities, sorry, starting to actually utilize KYC tools. Um, since we released our UBO report, our ultimate beneficial owner report, um, we've seen a huge amount of our customers take this up and, and, and through my discussions with them, you know, some of the reasons why they've identified that they've started to use it is the fact that you know, they, are, they are more interested now and they know that they can easily access more information from a, you know, either a technological improvement or a, you know, a, a, an affordability point of view um, to identify you know, the beneficial owners of companies they're doing business with 
particularly when dealing with complex corporate structures. And I'll show you an example of that. Actually, Creditor Watch is, and it's unintentionally complex. However, um, it's a really good example of, of, of what a complex corporate structure is. And when I talk about that, I talk about the fact that a company might come to you, an applicant, a potential customer might come to you and say, hey, um, I want an account and you go, great. You run an ASIC extract, for example, and you see that their shareholders is another company. You, you, you're you quite interested to know, okay, who who is the ultimate owner? Who am I dealing with? Who owns this thing from a credit risk perspective, um, putting KYC AML to the side? Um, so you look at the next company and and, and, and that next company, the, the, the shareholder, their shareholders are actually a company, all right? And, and this can go on for, you know, companies and companies, or you can have multiple corporate shareholders and, and you've got to try to understand exactly, you know, who's the ultimate beneficial owner, um, particularly if you want to get a personal guarantee from one of those people. So that UBO report um, has a really easy use case for those in, you know, traditional trade credit. So you can start to simplify those complex corporate structures and understand exactly who is behind um, those entities that you're dealing with. A few other points that have come up in our discussions with customers who are starting to use it and had been asking about us, asking for us to introduce it. Um, the KYC process itself has been beneficial um, for companies that operate in risky industries. So, you know, if you think about construction, there's, there's, all, there's often a lot of, um, um, I guess, companies going under. Um, it's particularly high risk industry. You've generally got multiple um, entities that you're either dealing with or involved in a deal um, or involved in a, um, you know, a construction project and they're set up in, in fairly clever fashions with, you know, multiple corporate, uh, corporate shareholders, trusts, et cetera. Um, so that's a really nice way to start simplifying that. For those larger um, credit limits, larger customers, for example, it's a nice way to do some extra due diligence. Um, and then there are there are companies out there that use Credit Watch who are just particularly risk averse, whether they're small or large organisations. They like to know exactly. They like they like to know as much information as possible um, regarding their customers or their new customers that are coming on board. So they're taking advantage of these tools that we're releasing and have recently released. Um, I want to talk about tranche two quickly as well. So tranche two, two is essentially the government legislating additional industries that are going to have to follow um, and comply with AML um, legislation. This, this was anticipated to come in last year, but the government actually decided against it. Um, but uh, as I understand it, it, it is most likely expected to pass parliament later this year as a number of other um, you know, similar countries around Australia or that Australia deals with have passed that legislation, including, I believe, New Zealand. They, they tend to be the, uh, the forerunner for Australian le legislation. Um, so real estate agents, accountants and lawyers. So if, you, if you're sort of touching, if, you, if you're operating in one of those industries, you are a real estate agent, accountant or lawyer um, and you haven't heard about this coming, um, I'd be surprised. But yeah, keep an eye on it. You need to be prepared for this. Um, coming legislation change, which is more likely to happen sooner rather than later. Um, and, and a big reason for that, that it's going to be those particular industries is the fact that they all um, operate trust accounts for, for customers, for example. Okay, so there's a lot of money being moved around um, that the government wants to make, make sure is being accounted for properly um, and there are no loopholes around um, or being used by uh, nefarious, you know, individuals or entities out there for the purpose of, you know, money laundering or um, uh, terrorism financing. All right, so I've got two example KYC processes here. The first is for an Australian company, a domestic um, Australian company. Now, essentially this is coming from, again, that Ready Reckoner Austrac. I've simplified it a little bit because it can get um, quite complicated. But essentially, this is what you would have to do to comply. All right, collect and verify the full name of the company as registered by ASIC. Easy to do, particularly through Creditor Watch. Collect the full address of the company's registered office and principal place of business if they differ. Uh, collect and verify the ACN 
collect and verify whether the company is registered as a proprietary or public company. And if the company is a proprietary company, so generally a private company rather than public, collect the name of each director. The next step, and, and arguably probably the most important, is to identify the ultimate beneficial owners of the company and determine whether each beneficial owner of the company is a PEP. And remember when I say PEP, I talk about politically exposed person. All right, so if we, if we have a think about this process, we can see that the first you know, three sections here can be covered off by a <clears throat> basic company credit report or credit check. Um, provided that the ASIC extract is up to date. The beneficial owner potentially could be signed off, uh, could be complied with with that initial ASIC extract. However, if you find that the shareholder is a another company, for example, um, or a trust, or um, a, an individual, you will need to identify, sorry, forget the individual, a, a trust or a, or a another corporate um, entity, you'll need to obviously perform additional checks on that. And that's where that UBO report that we recently released will come into that. And then the ability to do an AML screen, um, which will include a PEP search. If we look at how do we um, follow a KYC process with an individual acting as a sole trader, again, please don't take all of this to the bank. There is a, you know, some additional complexities that come in here, but for the purpose of uh, today's webinar, I wanted to try to simplify it as much as possible. Um, don't say, look, I went to a web, I signed into a webinar, Patrick Coughlin, CEO of Creditor Watch, said this was fine to do. Probably should have a disclaimer at the bottom, um, but we've simplified it here for you, just to give you an idea of, of what's involved. So with the individual acting as a sole trader, so they've got an ABN, uh, collect and verify the full name of the individual, um, a customer's full name comprises all of the customer's given names and their family name, very important. Um, address and date of birth, so you've got to collect the residential address or the full address of the customer's principal place of business plus their date of birth <clears throat> and then you need to verify that. So that's ultimately where you will use VOI, verification of identity or identification um, and, and through Accessing the DBS, for example, is one of the methods. Um, you can capture their license number. We'll fire that off to the DBS for you um, and return essentially a yes or no, whether that um, exists with um, the relevant government register, for example, the um, you know Roads and Transport Authority or the Roads and Maritime Service, I think they're called in New South Wales now. Next step, collect the full business name under which the customer carries on their business and collect the ABN issued to the customer. At the end of all that, you then need to determine whether the individual is a PEP by running a PEP or AML screening report as we call it at Creditor Watch. Okay. So some common questions that um, generally come out from people that we're talking and I think there's a couple already coming through um, in the go to webinar control panel question section what is a beneficial owner so a beneficial owner is defined as an individual who ultimately owns or controls that particular customer or company um, for the purpose of determining what beneficial means it's owning 25 percent or more of that particular entity that particular customer how do you deal with a trust? Trusts, unsurprisingly, are one of the more complicated entities. Um, I'd need probably two or three pages to go through, just because there are you know, different trust types. Um, there are different ways of um, setting the trusts up. So there's multiple ways of obviously fulfilling AML obligations. However, the single most important thing to do is get your hands on the trust deed and this is going to assist you in determining who the beneficial owners are. And from there, you can start to run your company or your sole trader individual type um, KYC AML processes from there. Who is a politically exposed person? I guess it also is what is a politically exposed person. So PEPs are individuals who occupy a prominent public position or function in a government body or international organisation. This can be inside or outside of Australia. Um, this definition also extends to their immediate family members and close associates. So being a PEP isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, 
you know, all of our MPs are politically exposed people. It's just about ensuring that that has been identified. So where does Creditor Watch fit into all of this? Creditor Watch has the tools and technology to ensure um, and assist your company complies with the relevant legislation. So as I mentioned, we can do the entity verification. We can help identify individuals and verify their documents. Um, we have a UBO report to identify beneficial owners. Our AML report or AML screening report will perform a PEP check and it also includes sanctions and adverse media. So um, have they been blacklisted um, by any international organisations or you know, um, other governments, for example? Um, is there any negative media reports about them? VOI checks I, um, I touched on and obviously DVS as well allows you to compare and confirm a customer's ID with the government record, the government source. Um, and importantly, as we do with everything, um, if you want to streamline it, automate and process all of this in real time, which you know generally organisations in you know in the finance world or, or gambling they want to be able to you know approve and, and open an account as quickly as possible, um, we have API integrations for all of the above for those who are interested. So let's jump in to Creditor Watch and have a little look at where you can access this information and how you can access it. So from the dashboard is the easiest way to start. Um, you've got your either additional searches here or the quickest way is in the nav up here, we've got business, KYC, AML, PEP, person, KYC, AML, PEP, and even international as well. Okay, so by clicking on AML PEP takes you through to our dedicated KYC and anti-money laundering page and you've got three options here. You've got the company and individual search which is going to give you the ultimate beneficial owner report and then run a PEP sanctions screening, an AML screening on the identified beneficial owners. So it does it all in one for you. Clean PDF or if you just want the UBO you can do that on the company or potentially you just want to run the screening on the individuals, you've got that option here. And it is really straightforward. Click on there, enter an ACN, click purchase. It will then email that PDF to you. So here is one I prepared earlier for you. Comes through as a PDF, gives you the ultimate beneficial owner straight away. So in this case, I've run it on Creditor Watch Proprietary Limited and it's identified that individual, Christian Beck, as the ultimate beneficial owner. There's no PEP sanctions, adverse media results against him, um, and he controls about 61.33% of, um, of Creditor Watch. Now, you're going, how do we get to that? All right, this is just to give you an understanding of how many companies Creditor Watch, the report itself, had to go through to come up with that total ownership. So if we look at Creditor Watch Proprietary Limited, go down to the ASIC section, we can see shareholding details is Creditor Watch Holdings Proprietary Limited. All right, so let's find out who the shareholder of Creditor Watch Proprietary Limited uh, Holdings is. That's InfoTrack Proprietary Limited. If we click on InfoTrack Proprietary Limited and look at who their shareholders are, we see that it is InfoTrack Group. Click on InfoTrack Group. Who are the shareholders of InfoTrack Group? Australian Technology Innovators. So you can see here, if you had to run this report every single time, plus try to work out exactly who the shareholder is, and how much they control, it is virtually impossible. So we get to ATI Group and we've got 52 different shareholders, the majority of which are companies as well. So that's extremely difficult to start trying to work out who the ultimate beneficial owner is. The Creditor Watch UBO report obviously does that for you almost instantly, take a minute or so, and provides you back with an easy to read report to say, 
this person is the beneficial owner, these are the linked companies that we looked through, there's no um, results from a PEP sanctions adverse media point of view and it gives you all the results underneath that as well as a summary on every single company that it has run the report on. So really, really quick due diligence in what would be otherwise um, you know, a, a costly from a um, dollar point of view, but also from a time point of view. So really easy to do there. Um, if we also look at an individual, I have another one that I've already ordered on our recently re-elected Prime Minister Scott Morrison, an obvious candidate. Scott Morrison, six results, potential match. All right, no surprise there, obviously. He's definitely a politically exposed person being the Prime Minister of Australia. So we've got here other results summaries against the other names that come, came up under Scott Morrison um, with the birth year 1968. We've got the number of adverse media or PEP or sanctions against them. So we see the first one is our is our PM. It's giving you a, a summary of the listing types, key information, where it's taking place, birth dates that we've got um, on file, political position. So we can see member of parliament, prime minister comes up a couple of times. He was the, he was the treasurer, of course. Um, he's a member of the Liberal Party of Australia. So this is a sort of PEP um, results that are being returned here. We can see who the associates are, and then we can see the media references coming through. So that's just an example of an AML screening report, which is going to return whether they are a PEP or not. Again, very simple, very quick for you to perform. Um, whether it's done via Creditor Watch itself, um, the platform, or whether it's done within uh, via API, both options um, as quick as one another. Um, another way to access that information that UBO report itself, if we go back down to the ASIC information under shareholding details, you can click the UBO report here um, or you can click more options if you wanted to get the combined one for example. Okay, so you can do that within the credit report itself. So just a recap here that I've put in, um, UBO report is run on a, that should say company, AML screening, which returns PEP sanction adverse media check is run on individuals. The combined report delivers both um, with the AML screening being run automatically on the beneficial owners that get identified in the UBO report. Single PDF um, available here, click there straight away for current customers. And as I mentioned, DBS is also available um, with Creditor Watch via API at the moment only. So poll question for those of you um, who are signed in and listening, would you like to be contacted regarding this? Is there interest there? Do you want more information? Um, please let us know because it just allows us to target our follow-ups Obviously, the, the majority of you will have account managers that are customers, so they can target um, you know, their responses to it. Um, and then obviously for those non-Creditor Watch customers, um, it's a good way for us to know who we should be contacting and whether there is relevance there for you um, regarding you know, AML and KYC with Creditor Watch. So thank you for that, majority of you are interested in being contacted. Um, I just wanted to touch on a couple of other helpful webinars, you know, talking about sort of due diligence and that sort of thing. Um, we've got ones that we've run recently, the first one being enhancing your credit reports, talks about the ability to auto purchase specific um, reports every time you, you load a company, for example, if you want a credit score, up to date ASIC extract, et cetera, already in there. Um, it also has a bit of an introduction, a bit more information on UBO reports itself. Um, and then the other one is how to conduct director due diligence. So that focuses more on cross directorship alerts and also looking at bankruptcy plus identifying bankrupt, um, current bankrupt or previously bankrupt um, sole traders, individuals, and even directors and guarantors as well. 
last poll for today, did you find today's webinar useful? Always um, at Credit Watch, we appreciate the honesty. So if you didn't, please let me know. Click no um, and, and go one step further and, and tell me you know, where, where I could improve or where we can improve on, on the webinar itself. Um, it's obviously one of those topics that you know we could probably spend hours or a series on and I think you know we, we will definitely do more on AML and KYC. Um, we'll probably get a little bit more um, granular, get a little bit more complex, get into the details of it, run through each individual entity that's out there and how you should be complying with that Austrac legislation that exists. Um, you know we can obviously there's a different process for companies to you know whether it's private or public then looking at um, individuals as sole traders and individuals operating as consumers um, you've got trust you've got partnerships you've got associations every entity type has a different way so um, there's plenty to go through and I would suggest that um, you know we will do more in the future so please do keep an eye out for that um, as always, what's happening next, upcoming webinars, always keep an eye out in your inbox or jump on the creditwatch.com.au forward slash webinars page. Um, for more information on UBO and KYC, I would suggest two things. One, you can click through to this page, this link. Um, at the moment, it's just talking mainly about UBO. However, we will be updating that over the next um, couple of days or the next week, introducing some more information around KYC, AML screening, uh, VOI, DBS, all of the acronyms that we learned today. But if you are um, if you want information a little bit quicker, then just get in contact with us. Um, admin at creditwatch.com.au or call us or contact your administrator. Um, so your account manager, um, there's no shortage of ways to um, to get in touch with us and, and get some more information and obviously come out and do demonstrations as well. Um, or we can set up you know, a time for your, uh, your development team if they're interested in integrating this information um, via API. So that takes us to the end today. I just wanted to say thank you very much for taking the time out um, and joining us. Um, it's always good to get such a good turnout. We've got it's like close to 200 people that joined us today, which is fantastic. So I appreciate that. Um, from a question point of view, there are plenty here. Um, I will have a quick look as we wrap up. If, um, if you want to leave us today, thank you very much for joining. I appreciate it. Um, if I can't get to all the questions, I will obviously get in contact or someone will be in contact soon. Um, so we've got what is the best approach for KYC when it comes to sole traders. So I've touched on the, 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 the simplified version of it. However, it is still ticks, you know, almost 70, 80% of what you require. The best thing to do is obviously jump onto that Ready Reckoner site or organize a time to speak to us. Same goes for charities and partnerships that have been asked about a couple of times here. Again, with partnerships, for example, we need to identify who the partners are. Um, and if they're companies or if they're individuals, you then have your company and individual process that you follow down the track. Just scrolling through here. Um, a question here, if you are not in finance or bullion or gambling services, is this still a legal requirement? No, it's not a legal requirement. Um, so I don't want you to feel that you've got to go off and start using these things. It's more, uh, I guess, an education piece around you know, what people in those industries are legislated to do and what people outside of those industries are starting to actually do themselves um, without actually being legally required to. Um, we've got a question here around uh, future directors being given a unique ID, um, which will enable director searches more accurate. Have you heard any updates on this? Really, really timely question there, Crystal. Thanks for that. Um, I had a session this week um, with the ASIC Business Advisory Panel. There's about um, 20 stakeholders from, uh, you know, legal, accounting, the bureaus, um, uh, a couple of associations, etc. And, and one of the big things that came up is that DIN, the Director Identification Number. Um, it was um, due to be put to parliament. It was being debated. However, unfortunately, with the call of the election, 
Um, it was subsequently, or all pending legislation subsequently, I believe gets scrapped, so to speak. However, the fact that the Liberals have formed Parliament, um, it, it is likely to be reintroduced in the coming months, we're hoping this year. Um, so that certainly will still be on the agenda, it won't be forgotten about, and that will make it much easier to identify individuals who are directors. Essentially, if I'm a director of five companies, I can have five individual director um, results with ASIC. Um, due to me being forgetful, for example, I could put Patrick Coglin versus, you know, Patrick Edward Coglin. I could make a mistake with my date of birth, um, and that would put individual results in there. So what this will ultimately do is force directors to have a single director identification number, and all of their directorships will fall under that. So that will be great legislation when it comes in, um, but I wouldn't expect that to happen in the next, um, to be rolled out in the next 12 months. I think that they're, they're talking about giving directors a 15 month grace period once that legislation actually comes into law. Um, is it possible to email today's similar notes to me? Yes, definitely, we'll get those notes out to you. Um, we'll send through a recording of the webinar as well as the slides themselves. And one last question here from Daniel. Do you have any products which provide ad hoc verification of identity rather than the UBO report? Yes, we do, Daniel. We have the ability to run VOI checks and or DBS um, checks as well. So um, what I will do is I'll make sure that someone gets in touch with you um, as soon as possible. If not, please do be in touch with us. Um, if you want a, a, speedier, um, a speedier response and explanation of how to do that. So that's all the questions for today. Thank you very much for everyone that joined us and that's still on and that asked questions. Um, I hope everyone got something out of it. Um, there was a 100% yes when I asked, was it a good, uh, or did you find today's webinar uh, valuable? So thank you for that. Um, and I look forward to you joining our next webinar. Thanks very much, have a good week.